Night has fallen. We come together on Maundy Thursday, responding to our call to remember the very last night that Jesus gathered with his disciples. It was the night to remember the liberation of the Jews from Egypt, the Passover, where death passed over the people of God, and they were liberated from 400 years of slavery. On this night, we are called to remember. Let us join our voices together in our call to worship. We gather this night to remember the betrayal of our Lord. We come to the Lord's table to be seated with the one who betrayed Jesus and the ones who abandoned him in his hours of great despair. We come to remember our Lord's humility and his servant spirit. This is the night we are called to remember the redemptive power of Christ as we break bread and share the cup in God's covenant of love. Jesus came to the Passover meal knowing it would be his last meal with his disciples before the cross. This meal was an opportunity for him to say and do the things he believed were of utmost importance for his disciples so that they would be able to reflect and remember his last words to them about how they were supposed to live and how they were to lead once he was gone. His first act as they gathered was to remove his outer garments, wrapping a towel around his waist, taking on the appearance of a servant. As we remember the humility of Jesus, King of heaven, let us humble ourselves before God and confess the ways that we betray God's love. Let us pray together. Christ, Lord of our lives, kneeling before your followers, you humbled yourself as a servant. You washed the feet of those who would walk away from you. You fed them the bread of heaven. You poured out the cup of salvation, knowing they would betray you, deny you, and hide away in fear and shame. We are still betraying your love for us, we are still denying the presence of your spirit in our lives. We are still hiding our faith, choosing to live in fear and shame. On this night, as we remember your humility and your grace, forgive us. See you. 
God created us. God longs for us. God seeks to be in covenant relationship with us. Our God, taking on human form, lived among us, showing perfect love. God incarnate, Jesus the Christ, forgave the very people who turned their backs upon him and those who took his life. He forgives us now. Receive the love and compassion of Christ in whom we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, who came to us in Jesus, 
it is impossible for us to grasp the suffering you were willing to endure because people could not comprehend your presence or your purpose in coming to us. You humbled yourself to come to us. Now help us to hear your word and understand your presence and your purpose for us in this hour. Amen. Here, the disciple John recount the humility of Jesus once again. As Jesus set an example for all those who follow him, listen for the word of God for you. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers, messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tonight is about remembering. Remembering what Jesus calls us to remember. In the bread we take, his body broken for us, the cup we share, the new covenant shed in his blood for our forgiveness. But it is a night we are also called to remember the ways we too have misunderstood Jesus, the ways we misplace our desire to know God, in the way Jesus comes to each of us, in the ways we've been mistaken in our interpretation and our understanding of Jesus' teachings, Jesus' promises, his death and resurrection. There are no words sufficient to explain or express the kind of love God has for us, that God would come to us in human form, that God incarnate would bend down and wash feet, would throw arms wide open to all people, would forgive every sin, then gift us with God's Spirit. God would choose to dwell within us, to be resident in us, as in Jesus. Silence is an appropriate response to the depth of the new covenant relationship God has made with us. It is beyond us to understand that the spirit of the living God, which gave Jesus the strength to sustain and endure the failure of people to comprehend the divine. That same spirit is in us, waiting patiently for us to realize and respond in God's new covenant of love and grace. 
After Jesus, God in the flesh, bent down to wash feet, he spoke. Here, again, the question Jesus posed to his most devoted disciples. Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. One more time, Jesus expresses what it means to be in covenant relationship with God the God who leaves heaven and comes to us, the God who takes on human form, the God who shows us the way to live in blessing, the God who holds us to the highest standards of pure love, the God who welcomes all, receives all, and who seeks our response both to God and our neighbor a willing response to be like Jesus, to follow his example, to study his ways, to do what Jesus has done. It takes intention to live a life of covenant response to the Lord of all creation. It takes courage to respond to the spirit of Jesus the Christ. It takes trust to live resurrected life now knowing what Jesus has done and doing the same for others, no matter the cost. Hear our call to examine ourselves as we remember the question of our Lord. Do you know what I have done to you? Be still and contemplate this question. We are called to remember this night, the night that everything changed. We know what it's like to have everything change overnight. The past year has been a clear and convincing reminder that we are not in control of our destiny or our life. But we are people who find our strength, find our peace, find our direction in the divine human being, Jesus who sat at the Passover table and with great hope and inspiration entrusted his ministry into the hands of people who barely understood who he was. This table is where we gather to find hope and inspiration. It is where our spirits and our souls are nourished. It's a table where we find ourselves in the company of God's people making our way through life with faith and trust in the Lord. Tonight, 
take this meal knowing that Christ kneels before us, calling us to remember the new covenant, a covenant of love and grace, which he proclaimed and continues to trust that we will be like him, proclaiming the new covenant each and every time we take this bread and this cup, responding faithfully to God's call to be like Jesus, committing ourselves to do what he calls us to do. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, telling his disciples, this is my body broken for you. And after dinner, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. People of God, every time you take this bread and this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the cup of salvation. The body of Christ broken for you. the cup of salvation. Remember what Christ has done for you, the bread of life, taking and eating it, the cup of salvation, drinking and rejoicing, that we are living everlasting, resurrected life, even now. Amen. Our souls have been nourished at the table of the Lord. Let us respond to the new covenant of love established in Jesus the Christ. Let us speak together our responsive reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, God saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Here ends the Old Testament reading, Holy Wisdom, Holy Word.
Let us pray. God, who bends down to meet us where we are, you have made yourself known through signs and wonders, through words of faithful people, but most significantly in Jesus the Christ. As we consider our response to the new covenant, you have graciously welcomed us to be a part of. We ask that you would help us to continue to grow in your grace, walk in your ways, and serve as Jesus served. On this night of remembrance, we dedicate ourselves to attending to your Spirit's presence in our own lives. We ask that you enlighten us on what it means to journey to the cross and live resurrected life here and now. We are mindful of the suffering in this world. We pray for all families who have suffered death and loss, the families in Atlanta, the families in Boulder, the families in our church, our community, our country, and this world who have not been able to stand at the bedsides of the loved ones who have died or been able to gather together to grieve their losses. We pray for an end to gun violence, racism, the pandemic, and the partisan divisions in our country which keep the progress of justice for all hindered in our land. Now, Lord, we keep our eyes on you as you guide us to the cross. Ignite our passion to respond faithfully to the humility and strength of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to call you our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the Passover table, our Lord went to Mount Olive, where he spent his last hours with his disciples. Then he took Peter, James, and John to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. It was there he was arrested and taken first to the chief priests and elders of the temple then to Caiaphas, the Jewish high priest who presided over the Sanhedrin trial of Jesus. From there he was taken to Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, then sent to King Herod, who plied Jesus with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing Jesus. Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in a robe, they sent him back to Pilate. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent back to us This man, as you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But three times with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that Jesus be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate granted their demand. He released to the crowd the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they chose to be released, 
and surrendered Jesus to their will. Let us, in silence, witness and contemplate Jesus' journey through Holy Week, from the Palm Branch Parade through his passion and death. For this is the night we are called to remember together. This is the night of the betrayal of God. <laughs>